What's happening, YouTube and Facebook fam? Hey, look, this this your boy Reg coming at you again. And so, I am at Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Cape Cod. And this is specifically Provincetown. So, this is where the pilgrims would have landed back there in 1620, somewhere in this area. I believe it's further down. I'm gonna try to get to the exact location. It might be over to the other side. I'm still trying to, I just got here about 20 minutes, about an hour ago. And I'm trying to figure this thing out, you know, so. But anyway, the pilgrims arrived at Cape, uh, Cape Town. They was, trying to, they was trying to sell from England to Virginia. And then it's my understanding that a strong wind came and blew them off course. And then they ended up at Provincetown. Now, I'm not the expert when it comes to American history. I'm still trying to learn American history. So there are a lot of people out there that are more qualified than I am to teach this stuff. I think his name is David Stotts, Drive Through History. He's a good one, and there's a lot of other good ones out there. They got good material out there, that, and they can do a lot better than I can. So, But anyway, the pilgrims arrived. They were trying to go to Virginia trying to head to Virginia. There was a colony established down there already in Jamestown, in that area down there. But and that's where they were headed. But they ended up here at, in Cape Cod. And so, and this is where they got off at. And so, uh, over there in the distance, I don't know if you can see, like there's a light tower over there. And I got a map right here. It has a name to it. It's called uh, Long Point light tower long point light tower so if you look on your map and you look at cape cod you know how you'll see like an arm and it's, it looks like it's flexing a muscle and there's an end point to it that's it right over there so i don't know if you guys can see it i want to try to walk i asked could i drive a car over there and they said i can't drive a car over there because that's what i I want to do, I want to drive my car over there, but they say I can't do that. And then I asked, could I walk over there? They said, nope, you can't walk over there. They said I might get stuck, because I guess something about this high tide thing, where the water goes above the rocks or something. I don't know if it's high tide now, but they say during high tide, the water levels rise. He said, I might get stuck. I said, well, doggone, I don't want to get eaten up by a shark. Because see, I think Jaws is out here somewhere. I think they. He probably swimming around here somewhere, so I don't even want to deal with him. But anyway, this is Cape Cod, Provincetown, and uh, so the pilgrims, they left England, uh, you know, they couldn't worship the way they wanted to. Like here in America, we can worship the way we want to. We can worship according to the dictates of our conscience. And uh, But over there, they had what you would call the Church of England, and they had all of these rules. They had the the hierarchy of you know bishops and priests and deacons you had to follow all of these man-made laws all of these rules all of this nonsense you couldn't worship god in the spirit and so they wanted to worship god the way that the holy spirit was leading them so they got they pretty much got ran out of england and then they fled to holland and then they didn't like it in Holland. Then they said, man, let's get, let's dip up out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's just head over to America. And so they were supposed to, supposed to head to Virginia, but then they got thrown off co course by a storm. They ended up right here, somewhere in this harbor. And, uh, and then, and so they ended up here. Now here's something interesting. I brought me my little book. And so before they got off the Mayflower, Remember we heard about the Mayflower Compact in school? I don't know if they read, I don't know if they taught us about this, but I'm going to read the Mayflower Compact or at least a portion of it. And I get to, and if, Brother Donnie Swagger, if you out there, man, I want to say thank you because you wrote this book, Light of Liberty, written by Donnie Swagger, and it looks like uh, Justin Nicholson. I want to thank both of you guys because... I really don't know much about American history, but anyway, I'm going to read from a portion of this Mayflower Compact, and I want you guys to tell me if it sounds like a Christian document. So it says, uh, I'm, a, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read bits and pieces of it. It says, in the name of God, amen, we chose names, I mean, I'm sorry, in the name of God, amen, we whose names are underwritten 
the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James by the grace of God so already you see you hearing the word grace of God it says by the grace of God of Great Britain France and Ireland Ireland King defender of the faith etc having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith they said we are here to advance the Christian faith let me say that again. It says we are here to advance the Christian faith. That's right here in the Mayflower Compact. They probably didn't, they didn't teach us that in school. But that's what it says. Having undertaken for the glory of God and, and advancement of the Christian faith in honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. Do remember they wanted to go to Virginia, but they ended up here at Cape Cod. Do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid and by virtue hereof to enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws ordinances acts constitutions and offices from time to time as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony unto which we promise all due submission and obedience in witness whereof we have here under subscribed our names at cape cod this is cape cod man I'm, it took a lifetime to get here Thank you, Lord Jesus, that I got here and I got a chance to see this. You made it possible, Lord. In witness whereof we have hereunder sub subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November in the year of the reign of our so sovereign Lord, King James of England, France and Ireland, the 18th and, and of Scotland, the 54th. And then it says the year 1620. So all of it happened right here in this area. And so I had to come. This is a historical moment, man, and I had to get over here. But check this out. Let me read this part again. Having undertaken for the glory of God and, event and advancement of the Christian faith. And so that's the Mayflower Compact, which laid the groundwork down for the Constitution of the United States. And... Uh, but if you read this, it sounds like a Christian document. So, I, you know, I, you know, when I talk to people, I explain to them that this is a Christian nation. I don't care what you say about it. This is the land of Bibles. It's the land of churches. And yes, this nation was founded on godly principles. And I do understand that the Native Americans were here. The indigenous people were here. I understand all of that. And I understand that, you know, down there in the Jamestown colony down there in Virginia, you did have uh, 20 Africans that arrived at uh, down there in that Virginia colony on August 20th, 1619. But here, in, up here in, in this colony, I'm gonna try to get over to Plymouth, man. It's a, it's a long way over to Plymouth. It takes about an hour and a half. I'm gonna try to get over there before the sun goes down. I'm trying to soak all this up too. It's just so much to take in, but uh. I'll, get, I'll talk about that another time, the Plymouth Colony. But anyway, they arrived here at, at Cape, Cape Cod. And, and this sounds like a, a Christian uh, document. So anybody that says, well, no, this isn't a Christian nation. No, this nation was founded on Judeo-Christian values. And so they arrived here. And, they, and uh, when they got here, over, and then eventually they ended up over. They, they stopped here, but then they sailed over to Plymouth. And then they set up a colony in Plymouth, and then that's where Squanto came along and helped them. He was a Native American, an Indian. I tell you, Squanto got a beautiful story. You should, you know, he was kidnapped and taken back to Europe. And when he went over to Europe, he became a Christian, and then he learned the English language. And then when the pilgrims arrived in Plymouth, Squanto helped them to survive off the land. And, and he was a Christian, and he spoke the English language. So you see divine intervention. So Squanto was kidnapped, taken to England, but then he was brought back to America right in time for, to meet the pilgrims when they showed up on, uh, at the Plymouth Plantation, landed at Plymouth Rock or whatever, however they say that. So there's a lot of history. And so this is a beautiful country. Uh, it's not a perfect country. And uh, 
I'm walking around Cape Cod. I see black people walking around. I see white people walking around, man. We all getting along with, you, with each other. We all chilling. You know, we all love each other. Just having a good time. Nobody's arguing with each other. But this movement was started way back there in England. Actually, it was start, this separatist movement was started at Bagsworth All Saints Church in Bagsworth, England. There was a preacher. His name was Richard Cl uh, Clifton. And Richard Clifton preached the gospel of Ch Jesus Christ in that church in, uh, at Bagsworth All Saints Church. And it was in Bagsworth, England. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and the seeds of the separatist movement movement was planted right there in that church. And uh, he linked up with William. He had friends. He linked up with William Brewster, William Bradford. And uh, eventually they left all Bagsworth. They, they left the church. They, they left uh, Bagsworth All Saints Church. Sorry. Sorry about that. They left uh, Bagsworth All Saints Church because they was being persecuted by the king of England. That king of England was tripping. So they left and then they went to, I think it was Scrooby. I don't have all of my notes with me, but they went to Scrooby. They started a church over there and then they said, man. And so he linked up with William Brewster, William Bradford, formed a little church over there. Then they, fought, then they fled Holland, decided to come to Cape Cod because, you know, the heat was on, man. The king of England was after them. The, uh, the Church of England with all of the rules, the hierarchy and all of the religion and, and all of the nonsense that was going on in that church. They couldn't worship our God according to the dictates of their conscience. And they said, man, I want out of here. So they left. It was 102 men. And uh, I don't think all 102 of them were saved. I think mo some of them were. I think the, a group of... There were some outsiders that got on that boat. I don't know the exact number, but they, they you know, so, but they ended up here. And, uh, but you know, their story is similar to Israel's, the, you know, the children of Israel, what did they do? They left Egypt because they wanted to get away from Pharaoh. And so these separatists, these, these pilgrims, these Puritans, they left England because they wanted to get away from the king of England. It was the same thing. So God, God is, I believe that God has had his hands in all of this. You know, America isn't a, an accident. You know, years later, uh, you know, of course, the Revolutionary War would, would occur and we would gain our independence from Britain. And, uh, and then we would become our own sovereign nation. And then years later, we would become a superpower. And like I said in previous videos, we helped Israel, God used us to help Israel become a nation on May 14th, 1948. And that fulfilled Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. And so God has used us in this prophetic program for Israel. Everything centers around Israel. Every, everything centers around the Abrahamic covenant. Study the Abrahamic covenant. Study Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 18. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. Genesis chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. Gen Genesis chapter, I think it's 22, verse 17 and 18. Don't got my notes in front of me. Study those because nations, empires, and world leaders rise and fall based on God's covenant with Abraham. So, so God raises up nations, empires, and world leaders to fulfill the ancient prophecy. So... God has used America to be a defender of Israel. He used Amer he has been using Israel to be a big brother to Israel. And uh, he's also used America to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to the world. So you see this ocean here? The gospel of Jesus Christ has been spreading throughout the entirety of the world. And God has used America. He used us. You know, he used our preachers, our ministers to get the gospel out. All right, so I'm going to sign off. I love you guys. God bless. I hope this video bless you guys. Sorry I'm not the expert on American history, but I'm learning. Your boy, Reg, is going to keep on trying to learn. Love you guys. God bless.